So fear tactics were effective. Oh, very effective. I mean, who? I mean, the white <clears throat> man was. Uh, well, it goes back to like the serfs in Europe. You belong to the land. You know, you could be passed. I mean, when uh, when Junior took over, he said, "Now, nah, Minnie and Molly and Jumbo and so and so, y'all just stay on the land." And uh, we, we'll do business like we always did business. And they didn't have to pay anything. Minor, you know, you got housing, you got, you may have bought some groceries, but you got surplus meal, government handouts, and stuff like that. So you could survive anyway. Yeah. So, looking, you know, <clears throat> fast forwarding back till today, why have the same tactics been effective? or fear always works? Well, you had the, uh, the 60s was an awakening. <clears throat> you know, that was a song we sung. We are not afraid today. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave, go home to my Lord and be free. We literally believed that. We believed it. And, then, and to see a whole room of people, young folks, who was of the same mentality, of the same mentality, you've never seen this before. So how, how did that kind of spirit, I mean, and I know that uh, we, eventually, we eventually got the Voters' Rights Act, which I want to talk to you more about that also, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> how did that feeling die? Well, I don't think it died. I mean, uh, certain things happen. Uh, first time, uh, <laughs> these white kids came to in the community. They was hippies. They worked for ten dollars a week, and um, you know, uh, they brought a lot of vice to Mississippi, marijuana. Uh, Uh, they lived with black families in the community, and uh, you know a lot of the guys dated black women. Some of the black guys dated white women, and that was almost miseducation was a cardinal sin in Mississippi. I mean, it happened on white men chasing black women, but it didn't happen the other way. So these little little white girls came in you know, from uh, Princeton and Yale and the Ivy League, and they spent the 90 days or 120 days in, in Mississippi working with the uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. They came from Antioch colleges, <coughs> and uh, that was a, a, you know, it was a kind of, it disturbed a lot of people, black and white. But the spirit that you all had, <coughs> excuse me, the spirit that you had is not around. It's, it's not prevalent today. Well, I mean, I, I mean the, 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 the uh, strength and the focus of it, it seems well, as though it's, it's been. Well, you know, I think things happen. You know, uh, for example, me, I moved to Fort Wayne after my mother passed, and it was an entirely different view. Northerners thought they was, quote, quote, better. They had better opportunities, better jobs, better houses for the most of us. And uh, those who didn't, they had government handouts. Uh, you know, free lunch program came along and those types of things. And um, so it changed the, I mean, when you hungry, you do anything to, to relieve that feeling of being hungry. But when you're full, you got t energy and things to do else, other things. So still the mindset was we're full. And so the activism side was kind of suppressed. Well, not only suppressed, but <clears throat> Jim Crow had a mean side, you know. They hid their faces and they did their work at night. You know, they, uh, you know, Poplarville, Mississippi, 
a man was coming home and he said, he didn't say yes sir, no sir. So I said, that nigga been out here too long. Let's teach him a lesson, you know. And you know, you got visited by the night party, the Ku Klux and Klan's and you know, and they was part and parcel of the police department. They didn't like you, they sent the goon squad after you, so you never knew when they was coming to visit you and give you a lesson in scare tactics. That was pretty, or oh, they bum your house, or, or, or they shot <coughs> Mega Evers in his doorway in front of his kids, you know. The sheriff, everybody who was in on it was in the uh, uh, law enforcement. So I guess that's one very effective way of toning down oh, yeah. a person's attitude. Oh yeah. Or kill off the, the leaders of it. Or you lost your job, your wife lost her job, and you have nine babies to take care of. You see what I mean? A lot of people, you know, so that was an effective way. Well, Joe, how many kids you got? I got nine kids. Okay, well, how you gonna feed them? Because I ain't gonna hire you no more. You gotta move off the property. You know, I mean, intimidation was, was their style. So with the intimidation, <clears throat> then parents would then teach their kids how to get along with these people. Oh, yeah. Well, you knew to say yes, sir, and no, sir. Oh, that was already in culture anyway. Oh, yeah, it was all part of the culture. I mean, they were doing that from day one. Now, sir, Mr. Jones, uh, the owner you work for, you said, Mr. Jones, uh, my mama says she needs $6 worth of meat. Put that on my bill. Okay, what she wants, some chicken? You tell her, send me a piece of that chicken. Or send me a plate of them greens. Or I mean, you know, that was that was that benevolent kind of control. So why didn't the uh, subservience totally take hold in your spirit? Because when you left there and came to Fort Wayne, you kept that spirit with you. Well, I mean, the thing you have to look at it—it it was the most exciting thing I'd ever been into, because. I'd always, I mean, since reading this book and seeing all of this, and said, dang, you know, how do we get so subservient? How do we become uh, so pacifist? You know, we went to church and sang those old song, Jesus, help me run this race, or, you know, all, you know, and, and, and go home and, and pray, you know, and, and God gonna make it better. You know, that type of thing. We, we, you know, I'm not saying that that wasn't good, but at the same time, it killed that aggressive spirit in us. The only thing we were aggressive on well, when we were fighting among each other. But again, that's part of the culture too, isn't it? Oh, yes. This was part of the thought culture, particularly in Mississippi. I got $50 on that nigga whooping whoop somebody's butt. White folks would, would create that for their entertainment. 